Hello, this is Dr. Connors. We are going to be talking about the book Lime Brain that you're downloading. So I hope this is a blessing to you. In this book, we're going to go over some, some complicated things, maybe. Some things that maybe you already know about. We're going to get into some details on what's actually happening in your brain when you have Lyme. Now, understand this book is titled Lyme Brain, but it can be with any uh, possible um, Lyme co-infection, or it could be with any possible biotoxin, anything that's going on that's causing an inflammatory state in your brain. So we have patients that come in that I'm quite positive that they have Lyme and test them, and it's something completely different, some other parasite infection in their brain. And H. pylori, which is in the same family as Lyme as far as the Burgdorferi, uh, gram-negative bacteria, but it can be something else as well. So even a heavy metal toxicity in the brain could cause everything that we're talking about in this book. So even though the book is titled Lyme Brain, I could do use the same cover, change Lyme to anything throughout the entire text of the book, and it could be called chemo brain, or it could be called uh, anything else. So I'm actually going to do that with chemo brain because that's so prevalent in my practice. So when we're looking at what's going on with Lyme disease in the brain, we're really talking about uh, phase three autoimmune Lyme. So if you haven't discovered that so far, you'll learn that in the first chapter of this book. If you've downloaded my other books on Lyme, you've already know this stuff, so I apologize for the review of that. But in the first chapter of this book, I dig into some other ways that Lyme and other uh, pathogens hide in our body. Instead of just going intracellular, there's other things that they can do to hide. Ultimately, when any biotoxin is eliciting a normal immune response over time, your killer cells are trying to kill it, but the biotoxin, like Lyme, is hiding within the cells or using another defense mechanism to ward off an attack. And your B cells, your Th2 response, is trying to fire to find the pathogen so it can make antibodies against it. And that's what you'd measure in a blood test, Lyme antibodies. But if it can't find it to make antibodies against it, there's where you get a, a false negative blood test. Uh, then it suppresses, and your Th1 side fires again to try to kill it. Well, there's nothing that has antibodies again, so this teeter-totter of an event goes on for weeks and months. Th2, Th1 response, Th1, Th2, Th1, Th2, back and forth. Pretty soon, your Th2 cells can start making antibodies against your own tissue in the area where it's trying to kill the pathogen. So if it's in your brain, you're going to have a lot of antibodies to your brain, and you're going to have issues. Once you start making antibodies to your own tissue, that's the definition of phase 3 Lyme. It could be phase 3 um, H. pylori. It could be phase 3 anything, depending on what the antigen is. So Lyme just happens to be the antigen of this person's autoimmune disease. That's what's going to cause all sorts of symptoms. You're going to have brain fog, confusion, uh, memory loss, uh, any kind of brain issues that you can think of and, and understand that you have two, you have multiple parts of your brain. When we're talking about brain fog and memory loss, etc. We're talking mainly frontal lobe and some deep uh, parts of the brain, the hippocampus and the amygdala and such. With severe memory loss, it could be the temporal lobe. Um, but also if, it, if you have inflammation in your parietal lobe, the sensory cortex, you could, that's a person who can have fibromyalgia type symptoms. They can have pain all over their body. One day their arm is hurting so bad, it's just throbbing and they can't take it, they can't stand it, and the next day their arm doesn't hurt at all and it's their right foot that hurts. It's just crazy. How can that happen? Well, many people have attributed, well, that's because the Lyme is moving around. Well, that can be the case, but usually it's not local Lyme in the foot or in the arm. It's an inflammation in the parietal lobe of the brain. So whatever area of the map of the body that the parietal lobe is inflamed, you're going to have symptoms in that part of the body. We're talking about brain fog and, and things like that. We have to understand those different lobes, the frontal lobe and what it does 
planning, the, the, uh, the, really the executive of the brain. And in this book, we talk mainly about that because that's a lot of people's symptoms. Temporal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, the cerebellum. Cerebellum, you get inflammation in there and you have antibodies made against cerebellar uh, cells. You end up with dizziness and it just loss of balance and running into things. And very, very common with Lyme patients. Now you could measure antibodies. There's different tests that you could do. This is a Cyrex test that measures antibodies throughout the whole body. This is called their Array 5. The Array 10 measures antibodies specifically just to the brain. Here you can see the top one is parietal cell and uh, myocardial uh, peptides. If you got antibodies to your heart, uh, myelin um, proteins, so you get antibodies to your myelin sheath. You're going to have demyelination and all sorts of problems. And many people with chronic Lyme and Lyme brain are diagnosed with MS, and ALS, etc. Once you have antibodies to self tissues, now your immune system is going to kill that which you have antibodies against first. So any immune reaction, any immune stimulation, uh, it's going to kill that which you have antibodies against. So in the case of Lyme brain, your immune killer cells, every time they fire, even if you have a common cold, you're going to destroy what you have antibodies against. If you have antibodies against your own nervous system, your own, this is, in this slide is a neuron, um, you can have dendritic antibodies, nucle uh, neural nucleal antibodies, myelin sheath antibodies, antibodies to the axon itself. Um, you're going to be in big trouble. You're going to have a lot of symptoms. Your brain literally is going to be on fire. So in this book, I'm going to give you some solutions, what you can do to help with this. Um, first of all, you have to get rid of the antigen. So that's the biggest thing. But then there's ways to calm down the, infla the inflammation, ways to calm down the inflammation in the brain. And um, that's what you're going to read about in the later chapters of the book. So I hope you enjoy it, and it's a blessing to you. If you have any questions, make sure you contact our office. Um, thanks very much.